Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a video talking about a recent post that I did on Instagram today actually. Um, it's kind of a weird like feeling um, to talk about kind of like the things that I've gone through the last few years because it's kind of weird that I really don't think about it a lot anymore. Um, but basically I posted this picture and I'll post it here for you guys. Uh, I posted that picture on Instagram and I talked about like how, yeah, I was super skinny and my hair was so long. And, but like the background of what was happening in my life at that time was like just terrible. <laughs> um, I wrote about how I could barely make rent the reason why I was so skinny because it was because I wasn't eating um and not in like a you know like a uh <laughs> like an anorexic type way no I'm talking about like you know eating maybe once or twice a day because I couldn't afford to eat any more than that um I also talked about how I just got out of a breakup, a really, really tough breakup in that picture. Um, and I didn't have money to go get haircuts and things like that back then. So this was actually only two years ago, which honestly um, doesn't like sound that long ago. But when I think about everything that has happened since then and like what I'm doing now and like where I am as a person now, it's kind of insane to think about how much has changed since that point and so um if you guys are wondering my hair i have curly clip-ins in um i'm in the middle of filming a video all about these clip-ins but i'll put my code down below for you guys just in case because i know people are going to ask um but yeah so anyway back to the video at hand um so actually i was asked i was asked to uh film a video a few well, maybe like a year and a half ago, not long after that photo was taken to talk about kind of a um, second part of a video that I did back in 2013. So fall 2013, I was um, I had just graduated from college and I had recorded this video that is still on my channel now. I'll link it here for you guys so you can like go watch that and if you want to like pause this video to go watch that video in order to kind of like get caught up in things then feel free. I'll be right here. <laughs> so I recorded that video. I had just moved to Ohio with my ex at now obviously my ex um, but in that video my current boyfriend so you'll hear me say my boyfriend and blah 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 and um and I talk about how I had just graduated and I had basically I had all these plans so essentially when I was in college I was super involved like I was like that chick in college and if you went to college with me or knew me back then you would know that I was involved in everything I was like the president of multiple things and I was um, super instrumental in creating different programs on campus and like just doing a lot of things and being really impactful and purposeful and you know all of that type of stuff like that high of being a student leader in college that a lot of people have right when you're a student leader and you like feel like you're on this pedestal and like you do all these great things right but they don't tell you about about like the decline <laughs> of after you get out of college and you don't have any of that stuff anymore and you don't feel you know important anymore you're just like a regular person just going about life and nobody f makes you feel special anymore really like like that anyway um and so I was coming off of that and um you know I had already planned on going to grad school I'd gone through the whole like admissions process um, applying to all these different schools, doing the GRE, like all of that so I could go to grad school for higher education. And so um, I got it accepted in a place and I talk about this in the video but I'm trying to catch you guys up if you don't go watch that. Um, but I talk about how I got admitted on a conditional basis into a university um, that was one of my top schools that I wanted to go to and it was in the DC area because I really back then I really 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 wanted to be on the east coast and I really wanted to live in DC and um, and so I was going there had everything laid out and then my financial aid kind of like fell through so I ended up having to wait a year before I actually started going to school and in the program that I just graduated from last May 
So I did obviously end up going to school, ended up graduating and doing all of that. But obviously I'm not working in that field anymore. So that it's just like kind of crazy to think about like how I can like trace all these steps. So I'm trying to go in chronological order for you guys, kind of tell you what has happened because the whole point of this obviously is, you know, how did I get through all of this? So, and the different things that happened to me during this kind of journey. And so, in the video I talk about, you know, I lived with my boyfriend at the time and he was a pro athlete and he got injured so I wanted to go up there and support. And I mentioned how, you know, it wasn't a second choice to go there but it was at the same time because it was. Like, honestly, I wasn't being honest with myself uh, in that moment in time in my life. Was not being honest with myself at all. Um, I kind of forced myself into that position because that's where I wanted to be instead of kind of listening to what God wanted me to do and at the same time I think God did want me to go through that experience because it helped me grow as a person but at the same time I was living in my flesh a lot a lot a lot back then I really wasn't in my spiritual journey really that much and I wasn't really kind of like letting God kind of rule my life type of thing and so uh, I was kind of making decisions based off my own merit and my own knowledge versus asking God to kind of guide me to what I needed to do and where I needed to be. And so I was at, I was living with him, you know, and it was just horrible. Like, it was absolutely horrible. Um, we were, how old were we at that time? 22. And so uh, he got signed to a, an NFL team, obviously, and because um, he played football. And... Um, you know, I wanted to be that person for him. I wanted to be like the wife, the girlfriend, whatever. And, you know, I didn't put myself first. Like I was trying to be something that I saw, something that I liked versus something that was true to myself. So, um, it was a really terrible experience to be quite honest. It was uh, a lot of fighting, a lot of tears, a lot of like, you know, criticizing how who I was and how I looked and everything because, you know, he wasn't really into me anymore, um, essentially. Uh, and so I was, you know, holding on to this relationship that I'd had. We had been together since um, high school. And so I was holding on to this relationship that really wasn't that uh, strong anyway because we had had issues in the past with infidelity on his part and... Uh, you know, I kept taking it back and then I was still having like different relationships in college with people like I did have a few flings in college that you know, like it happened or whatever, you know, like um, not that I it was kind of like the whole thing like in college like when you have a high school sweetheart and you guys don't go to the same school because we didn't go to the same school we went to two different schools and so um, gosh, this is so complicated. I'm like Oh, horrible storyteller right now because I didn't really think this out about like different I'm jumping around bear with me though y'all bear with me so basically he uh, he went to another school he was really great at his position he got signed all these things great amazing things right and me on the other hand I lived a totally different life like I still still in school but I lived a different like college life than he did like I was super involved I really didn't care about sports that much like I wasn't like the girlfriend that was at every game and I think that that's what he needed me to be essentially and I wasn't that and I think we were both kind of kidding ourselves of like who we wanted the other person to be because like honestly in high school I was the girl who went to every game but when I started actually finding myself in college and becoming the woman that I am now like that's not me any like that's not me I'm not I'm a supporter for sure, but don't expect me to put my life on hold for you to go do whatever you want to do type of thing. It was never like a kind of give and take situation. It was like a give, give, give on my part. Um, and yeah, so essentially I was living with him. Okay, so let's go back. I was living with him after college. That lasted about three months. So uh, at that point, I had gotten a job at Ulta, which in the video I was so excited about. And that's one thing I wanted to point out is that like through all the struggle times of my life, like I'll find like the smallest thing to be happy about. And I will just focus on that to make myself feel better. Because honestly, I was so excited about working at Ulta. But if you think about it, I had a boyfriend that was making millions. And I won't say that like, he had the millions right there. Like, yeah, okay, he had a multi-million dollar contract. Okay, 
And I don't know if he's going to be upset that I'm giving out all this information, but if he is, like, I'm sorry, but this is, that this is, like, my story, too, type of thing. But at the same time, I'm not, I don't know. Should I be apologetic? Should I not be apologetic? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Anyway, um, but I doubt he'll even see this. So, um, so, yeah, so, but he was kind of, like, providing, like, you know, a roof over my head and food, essentially, but, you know, I'm not even gonna go there. I'm not even gonna go there, because I don't even want to, like, open that up, because that's just another situation. Basically, okay, y'all, basically just wasn't a good situation. I was working a part-time job just to have money to spend, like, just for, like, me to have something so basically what happened the kind of like the breakup was i came to texas for homecoming right and i flew out here and we had had a big fight before i left and uh left on really bad terms uh and so uh he was texting me and he basically said i'm not in love with you anymore and i was like well <laughs> guess i'm moving out when i get back like um i'm you know i'm saying this lightly right now but yeah i was in shambles um because mind you i thought i was gonna marry this person i had been with him for so many years uh even though we were on and off at times he was always like above everybody else essentially like if he called i was like okay what do you need i'm running like what 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 um type of thing no matter what i was doing and so um, when that relationship ended, I moved back to Texas. At the time, I had spent all of my little coins that I earned at Ulta <laughs> to move back, to ship all my stuff back, to ship my car and everything. And, um, he actually paid for my car to get shipped, I will say that, so I was appreciative of that. But, you know, um, it was kind of like a surreal thing because we had grown up together, essentially, from, like, high school to college. And I remember when he dropped me off at the airport um he like gave me like a half hug and said see you later and in my mind i'm like crying i'm just completely in shambles and um just just over the top like just like completely just a mess and i just couldn't believe that he like just said see you later he just said see you later it was just so like heartless so anyway get on the plane i moved back to texas i don't have a place to stay at the time i could have gone back to my parents but i was like no i can't be at my parents house like that's just too much that's too much for me to do i'm so independent like i couldn't do that and, and i knew that i needed to be around my friends i needed to be around my support system in that way so um i went and live with my sister um i stayed on her couch for a couple months and then uh and that was interesting um, and then we got into our own place where she was, like, covering most of the rent. This is what I, you know, talked about, like, only being able to afford, like, $400 a month. I wasn't living in a place that only cost $400. Um, some of y'all were like, where are you paying $400 rent at? No, I wasn't. No. It was a, my sister was taking a bulk of the expenses and, like, only only letting me pay 400 because she knew that was all I could afford barely okay and so um every day was a freaking struggle but at the same time you know I would look at the little things like I said the little things like nothing bad happened today so that's a good thing right like the fact that nothing bad happened is a good thing so I would like think about that or I would um I would really take pride in my job so when i was working retail at the time because i couldn't get a job anywhere else um i would really i really took pride in my job i really took pride in selling clothes you know and um really fell in love with just dressing up and kind of tapping back into my love for beauty because when i was working at ulta that's when i started really learning about a lot of brands because i would literally walk around the store reading all the back of the labels and um looking at all the different brands that were available like just like looking at the inventory and seeing what was out there and testing little things out and stuff so that's where i really got all of my knowledge as far as like different brands what what different ingredients do and stuff like that and how branding works kind of thing because i literally like surrounded myself with it so um i was kind of tapping into like my beauty stuff because i kind of was having this revelation without even realizing it that i wanted to be in the beauty space but the way my life was set up i i couldn't see it at that time 
what was going on. I was still kind of on this mode of I'm going to grad school, I'm going to work in education, which obviously I stuck in that mindset for the next two years while I was in my grad program. And so um, I'm living the, in Texas, I'm working, um, uh, I also went through a phase of going out a lot. Uh, I used to, I was going to the club a lot um, because I really didn't have anything else to do. Uh, drinking a lot to be quite honest um, obviously going to the club you drink kind of thing and nothing like bad to the point where like, I was like an alcoholic but it was a lot like I was just drinking multiple times a week um, and I was definitely kind of like getting drunk and then being super super emotional and just like because I was heartbroken I was heartbroken at multiple things like I was heartbroken that I wasn't in school I was heartbroken that I just broke up with this guy that I thought I was going to be with forever and then like there would be times where uh, a few months would go by and he would like text me and then we would see each other and then we would see each other for one day and then not speak anymore and then it was like this whole back and forth thing for a while for about a year and a half and mind you I was still kind of like you know still talking to other people like dating other people just going on dates type of thing but he was still kind of around so it was like I was like stuck in this like really crazy like place and then I wasn't really feeling like I was walking in my purpose at all like I literally remember thinking like this is not my life like my life is not supposed to be this and um and so literally going through all those things and like the ups and the downs of like just random crap that would happen like my car would get towed multiple times in a row and I would be like I literally have no money for this like what the hell am I supposed to do I have no money <laughs> to get my car out so thank god my mom was so supportive and literally like understood my struggle to the point where like I would call her just like in tears like how am i supposed to live my life if i have no money how am i supposed to become better if i have no resources like how i'm stuck and she just would be there for me she would send me money whenever i needed it and mind you like like my mom is really well off my parents are in the military so they have good money they're like middle class upper middle class and so but at the same time like they did not expect me to ask them for money type of thing like me and my sister were on our own since we were like 18 like going to college having jobs since we were 16 like very independent so for me to continuously ask my mom for money because I literally did not have it was really hard for me it really like cut my pride down a lot um and so kind of reminded me of the humility that I needed to have and the humility that I still have to this day because I know what it's like to not be able to afford to eat and what it's like to watch somebody okay who's your direct like direct like replicate like i have a twin sister and literally through this whole thing that i'm going through she's like flourishing she's um working a corporate job that she got an internship in college and kept that job after and is still with the company to this day uh so she literally was so stable and so safe and and all of that and I on the other hand was the complete opposite like I was like maxing credit cards out um I was feeling down on myself but at the same time I was like trying to like live a life that I couldn't afford and like just like just crazy um it was really really tough it was really tough and uh on top of just trying to find myself and trying to figure out what kind of person I wanted to be. So ways that I coped, um, I started writing. I was I was journaling all the time. And I read some of my journals a few months ago, actually. And it's just crazy, like, the things that I was going through mentally. Um, but writing it out was so therapeutic for me. I also would write down my prayers. Like, that was when I really tapped back into my walk with God, for sure. Because I literally, I was like, what else am I supposed to do? Like, what else am I supposed to do but lean on God at this point in my life? 
So I started doing Bible study with my line sisters and some of my sorority sisters. I was, uh, we would do prayer calls and I was writing down my prayers and really kind of trying to develop that really close relationship with God. And I didn't want it to be something that was like everybody else. Like I wanted my own individual relationship with God and have my own set of faith and beliefs and all that kind of stuff. And you know, I, I started going to church a lot again and all these things. And um, so honestly, that was a huge part too. It's like when you're down to nothing, like you have to have faith because that is literally the only thing that's going to get you through. Like no, nobody else can solve your problems. Nobody else can make you feel better. Nobody else can humanly do anything to make your life better but yourself like you have to choose to do better you have to choose to have faith in something you have to choose to know that like you're not alone in life and that God is there with you more than any other human being can ever be there for you so when I started understanding and truly believing that I wasn't alone in life and that God was was doing this for a reason like I believed I was like God I know like I'm struggling right now and, and this period kind of lasted about a year and a half or so 2013 was like one of the toughest 2013 and a half of 2014 was one of the tough probably the toughest time of my life like seriously um and so i was just like god like i know that you're working on me like i know it but just let me find small happiness and little things so that i can get through this this time through this storm and like that's kind of like the idea that I had to keep on my mind fresh on my mind all the time because i just knew i was like God, I have faith that, like, this is not it for me. This is not supposed to be my life. And so I kept working. And when it was time to reapply for grad school, like, I was on it. Like, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get into school. Like, this is this is my way out of this situation right now is to get in school. And so um, I got accepted to SMU, Southern Methodist University. That's where I got my, um, my master's degree from. And... Uh, that was the, the turning point. When I got back into school, I was so appreciative, like y'all. I was so appreciative of an experience where I was back in a classroom, where I was learning again, where I felt like my world had light in it again. And that was education for me. And so, um, you know, I go through grad school, I get in another relationship, so you guys know I was with London for like a year, and that was great, you know, but obviously we broke up and things just weren't kind of like what I wanted anymore, and I think that he, like, we just broke up obviously for um, mutual reasons or whatever, and, um, you know, I let that relationship go because of all the time that I had spent going back and forth with my ex, and um, this turned into a relationship video, low key. I just knew like when I was checked out of my relationship with London, like I was checked out and I was like, you know what, I'm done. I'm done. Because there were things that were happening in our relationship that I was just like, yeah, no, this is not what it's, this ain't, this ain't it. Like this, this, this ain't it. So he felt like it was abrupt kind of, but at the same time, I'm like, no, it's not abrupt. Cause we know this, this ain't, you know, dysfunction is not supposed to be right. It may be normal for a lot of people, but it's not right. And um, I chose not to be, I chose not to even have a little bit of dysfunction. I chose to not be in a relationship with even some bad aspects of it, you know, like some things that I really didn't care for, but other things I didn't. No, I was like, you know what? No. If I'm going to be in a relationship with somebody, I want them to be everything. I want them to be everything that I want. So I I wanted, I knew that the person that I was supposed to be with was going to hit every single mark that I wanted them to be. And so when I broke up with London, that was also another kind of stormy time in my life. So this is when I decided to do this full time. So... I decided to do YouTube and do lipstick and curls full time back in like January, February time of 2016, earlier this year. And I was struggling with the relationship um, with London. It was just like rocky. And then um, I was really just 
burned out like getting beyond my burnout point i was having really high anxiety um i was having literally i was i was working a conference and i had a moment where i was just like i don't want to do this shit anymore like this is not what i'm supposed to be doing and it was almost like a, a, a literally like a revelation like i'm not supposed to be here this is not my life so i was like oh my god so my job is still in the semester so then it became a real struggle to get through the semester and not just quit at the same time i was booking bigger opportunities through lipstick and curls i had already let go of my old manager who was that was making lipstick and curls stressful at one point and then i was on my own for a while then i booked the colgate commercial and then i was like finding my i found my well my manager now found me and we were doing awesome things and starting up really great things and i was just like Oh my gosh, like, I'm supposed to be doing lipstick and curls. I'm not supposed to be doing this, but at the same time, I knew I owed it to myself. And to that year and a half that I struggled, and when I got into school, I was so thankful for school and the opportunity that and the life that I was living in school. I was like, I owe it to myself when I had nothing to finish this. Because if this didn't happen... I would still be back there. I would still be whoever I was at that time because I wasn't me. And so I was like, you know what, Jade? You got to finish. You got to do this. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your parents. And you owe it just to yourself, to be quite honest. Um, so I graduated and kind of like the rest is history. Like you guys have been following me like the last few months, the summertime. I was like, traveling like crazy booking amazing opportunities still booking awesome things i like hit over 100k um financially this year like yes like i'm doing so well and you know i want to be honest about the amount of money because i want to show you guys that i went from barely being able to pay 400 dollars a month two years ago to living on my own in a beautiful apartment in the city in a high rise, buying my first car, being able to go to the mall and be like, I want this and I want this and not having to worry about like a budget. Yes, I still live on a budget somewhat, but you know, like being able to invest in myself with equipment and um learning how to be more me learning how to embrace more of myself and not feeling ashamed or feeling like i have a deep desire that i can't touch because i should be doing something else if that makes sense like it's been an incredible journey and so I'm just so blessed to be in this space right now in comparison to where I was before. And if there's anything that I can give you guys beyond everything else that I've said in this video because I've kind of just like talked and I don't even remember what all I've said but you know when you're struggling you have to find the little even mustard seed y'all of faith. Even if it's the smallest little thing that is, is light in your life, you hold on to that for dear life. Hold on to that for dear life. And as long as you keep holding on to that, your faith will grow stronger. Your belief in yourself will go stronger. Your knowing and understanding that things will get better will grow stronger. As long as you hold on to that little tiny bit of hope and faith that things will get better. And that's all I did. That's all I did. I just, I just was faithful. I was just faithful. And I just knew that that wasn't supposed to be my life. So I made the choice and I made decisions to get myself out of that position. Even if, you know, I'm not doing what I got my master's degree in now. I am reaping all the benefits of my degrees now. All of it. Like, I wouldn't, this is my life. Like, this is my life. This is where I'm supposed to be. 
and I'm so happy and so excited for the future. And I know that when I come to more storms, because more storms are coming, just stay tuned. More storms are coming. I'll share them with y'all. Um, I know that I will have proven to myself before and time again that I can get through it. And I would know and I will know that every storm will come to an end and everything is balanced. When there's good, there's got to be bad because without the bad, you don't really cherish the good, right? Because if it's always good, then you never really understand how valuable and how amazing good is. So I would never go back and change anything that has happened to me. And, you know, there's a lot of other things that have happened to me, but I'm I, obviously this video is getting kind of long. Um, but, you know, if there's a different aspects of my life or different things that I've talked about today that you want to know more about, let me know and I can like do different things, whatever, because I haven't even talked about my damn childhood. <laughs> um, and things that I went through back then. So let me know if you guys want to know more. But um, I felt like I should share because you guys, I got an overwhelming amount of people um, commenting and engaging with me on that post. So I figured I would do a little bit more in depth on my channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and um, take care of yourselves. You know, if you're going through something right now, know that like it'll get better. Promise.